so I, I just wanted to add, first to start, that uh, yes, I think that there is a very vibrant debate that started, as you say, with the policy brief uh, of the Economic Council in the US in 2016 about how, how, how much concentration there is in the market, and, and uh, particularly at that time in the US. And I think that uh, it is a legitimate debate. Uh, I think the, also Jan's um, research shows that it seems that something did happen after 1980. Um, I would argue that uh, there's an interesting question that what did happen after 1980 was the financialization of the economy and the globalization after the 90s, the entering of China into the world economy. So there were structural changes that were, a lot of them institutional. So we changed the rules so that to make those things happen. And I have, my impression is that there was a, a change, a structural change of which the antitrust enforcement was just a part. Like, we pulled some tools at the benefit of some firms and were just consistent in how we, you know, in what we're promoting. And the interesting part of that is that the things that were changing were things that big firms could benefit from to a much larger extent than smaller firms. You had to be able to do complexity, you have to be able to use complex financial instruments, you have to be able, you have to, be able to change. And, and so some companies were in a better position than others. So I'm not going to enter whether that's a good or a bad path. I'm not going to enter whether we want big, large firms and, or, or, or a bigger set of smaller firms in the, in the economy overall. I think it's a legitimate debate. But what I want to focus on is um, on an argument that I'm going to make that digital platforms are in fact an entirely different animal than what this conversation is, what this concentration conversation is talking about. And I think that gets lost in the debate because big, large digital platforms are very big and very large. Um, but the reason why I think they can't be put in the same box is that I'll argue that digital platforms are not your typical firm because they're mostly organizations. It's not, a, it's not an input-output factory. They don't, a lot of the input that they use, they don't buy but it's the people participating in the ecosystem that provide. So if you're a, and I'm talking about real platforms, so platforms that connect a variety of users, a variety of businesses to produce an ecosystem of a, a set of services. And what they do, I mean, if you're a social media company, like the company I work in, you, your quality is what people do on the platform. The users produce the content, Developers or businesses build their pages, advertise and advertise. So it's you depend on what other people are doing. You are coordinating other people's options. You have a, uh, a Google or an Amazon. Amazon will depend also on what people. Intermediaries, some platforms are closer to traditional intermediaries, although they're fast evolving. But as soon as you open, you are an organization. And so you cannot be treated as, as a typical firm because these, com these companies invest an enormous amount of, um, in digital tools and to facilitate other people's growth. And so when you, you see very large platforms, you have to see that those platforms are being used by a huge amount of companies and users for their own growth. And so, and I'll put the example of Meta because I know it best, but every large platform is the same. Meta not only supplies advertisement, Meta provides businesses with analytics, with the information to build campaigns, and then they, they, they provide businesses to even tools to, management, to manage appointments. They provide businesses with AI tools. Uh, a lot of open source technology is put at the services of developers so they can build on the platform. A lot of AR, virtual reality, but even speech recognition, image recognition, all these tools are given for free so that people can build on the platforms and, 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 and developers can grow uh, their own services. So when we talk about platforms, we're talking about an ecosystem of activity. And it's very different than a traditional firm. And the problem we face is that sometimes when people just make generalities and say, okay, we have, they're big and they're powerful and therefore we have to curtail them, they switch to mental frameworks from the analog world. 
And in particular, they think, oh, it's an infrastructure. We're going to regulate them like an infrastructure. We're going to provide access, interoperability. And I'm not going to say that some access and some interoperability is not a good thing. But, but what you do when you provide access to a platform is very, very different than what you do when you provide access to a network. Because everybody knows what a network is for, how to use it, what everybody's going to do on it. It's the same. A platform is a design. As soon as you change something or the participation of certain people, the company is going to react and can completely redesign the space. And so it's, it's, nobody knows what a meta, a, a Facebook product if you, or Instagram, if you look how much they're changed and how much the difference of how they're being used today compared to even five years ago. And it could do something entirely different two, three years from now. And so, I just want to have this caveat that a lot of the policies are being designed for a world that is not really the world where they're going to be applied. Uh, and so that is a big word of caution. And I think it's, I think where a lot of the, th I think thinking needs to go is that we need to understand digital platform much better, I think, and I think we're not there yet to design regulation that we're confident can work and achieve what we wanted to achieve. A lot of the aggravations with digital platforms, as I said before, they're an ecosystem. Many people participate. They are, by design, mostly a win-win environment. A lot of the discussion is about how do we share the spoils? How do we, re how do we share the value that has been jointly created? That's where the dispute is. So many users say, I deserve more. I'm not going to go whether that's true or not. Is it also a legitimate discussion? But I think we need to frame things uh, properly. And I think a lot of the reports we've seen haven't, are yet ch using too much uh, analog uh, frameworks uh, for, to be at a stage of, of policies we can be confident about for the moment. And I'm going to leave it there.